Morning folks, welcome back. We're off to filming crew today. I can't run right now because of my heart condition, but my good friend and running buddy, Jason has agreed to help us out and film a few routes for us. Some call him the Jasonator, a machine sent back from the future to crush running challenges. We just call him Jason. If I'm going to run with Jason, I have to get up early. I encourage him to do silly things, and he encourages me to enter races, and most of our adventures finish in Weatherspoons. I can see him going to run adventure at top on. Yeah, he's ready. Ready to rock and roll, buckaroo. All right. Nice top. <laughs> Thought I had it in the cupboard somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, so feel free to change the route if you need to. Okay. I mean, quite often I'll go out and then you'll go, hang on, I'm going to miss that bit over there. Or it's me. Mm. So you're still feeling it from the mouth on the other day? A bit, yeah. Oh, I'm okay. the universe decides who is flipping a coin oh. <laughs> so he, on, yeah on the Saturday night because he said then if I quit it's not me quitting it's the coin telling me to quit so I'll let the universe decide anyway Saturday <clears throat> Saturday night it came up heads so he did another one Sunday but then oh, sorry Sunday night he uh, flipped tails so he stopped yeah. But it, it's, uh, it's uh, kind of like a bittersweet moment, really, because he said, I've had a really good day today. Loads of people went out on Sunday because it's like long run day, isn't it? Yeah. Bike day, long run day, people have got time off. Because he was saying in the week, some days there was nobody, he was just doing the whole thing. There's only so many days in a row you can do a triathlon, though. So, so what, what's his name again? Sean Conway. Sean Conway. And it, so he's doing a triathlon, every, he'd done a triathlon every day for over 100 days. Yeah. So that's a full marathon. Yeah. So it's a one point. It's a two point four miles. So it's an Ironman basically. You yeah. got to do it in under seventeen hours. So right. it was averaging about fifteen hours. We started off at five in the morning in Mold Leisure Centre. Yeah. Two point four miles swim. Then you'd do a hundred and twelve mile bike ride. And then a marathon. Yeah. Back to back, and you have to get under seventeen hours is the cut off for an Ironman basically. So he only on day two we only made it by about ten minutes. So he tried it last year and then he quit on day seven because he unsurprisingly had really. an injury. Yeah, well, you would. I mean, most he's, most people would. <laughs> I mean, he's a bit a machine. He's an interesting guy. You read his backstory. He grew up in Zimbabwe. He was born in Harare, uh, where he was climbing trees and wild camping and chasing elephants out of his garden. Right. And he came over in 2004. And lived with his aunt in Cheltenham for a bit. He had a hundred quid in his pocket, that was it. And then he went and crashed in a squat in London with seven others. Then he started a little photography business. And he did pretty okay. And then he sold it for a quid. He's, he's got a, he was on, um, when he swam the length of Britain, he was on TV with Russell Howard. Right. It's a really good interview on that. Anyway. So he decided to cycle the length of Britain, but at that point he didn't actually have a bike, and he wasn't really into cycling, but he just went and did it anyway. And that's the kind of like mindset, yeah. just like get up, do a thing. Yeah, so I'm gonna drop you off, and then I'm gonna do a drive round past the station, which is the only bit we don't get okay. in the route. I'll just drive, do a drive-by, and then I will come back to here. I brought my camping chair, excellent, so I can just sit quietly. 
and he's off. I tell you, this guy can run like Tom Cruise on an action film. We'll catch up with him in a minute. Let's go and have a look at the station. Crewe is a major rail hub. From here you can get to Liverpool, Manchester, London or Holyhead. The station opened in 1837 and shortly after, the Grand Junction Railway opened their locomotive works here in Crewe. Ahead on our left is Crewe Arms Hotel. The hotel was originally built as the station hotel in 1837. Queen Victoria became a regular visitor on her way up to Balmoral and in fact they built an underground tunnel to allow her to move uh, privately through to the hotel. It was then rebuilt in 1880. It's uh, quite an imposing building. And he's off heading into Queen's Park. If you listen closely, you can hear his biomechanical service whirring as he pumps along at speed. <laughs> so Queen's Park, it's a 44 acre grade two listed public park, which was opened in the 1880s. It's a beautiful place for a walk, lots of lovely open space and a lake. So I can hardly recommend it. For the little kids, there's a nice play area too. If you'd like to come and explore this route for yourself, do go visit the website runadventurer.co.uk where you'll be able to look at a map and download a GPX file which you can import into the app of your choice so you don't get lost. Jason today's got the Ordnance Survey map on his phone and he's also got the map downloaded onto his Garmin watch. Heading out of the park now, beside the playing fields, we're going to head up West Street and then head for Pims Lane, the home of Bentley Motor Cars. So this is Pim's Lane, and ahead of us is the Bentley Motor Car Factory. The uh, factory was originally built back in 1938 to help with the war effort. Rolls-Royce built its Merlin uh, airplane engines here. After the war, the factory transitioned to making cars uh, on both the Rolls-Royce and Bentley badge. More recently, it's split and just become Bentley. There are still a large number of people working here, highly skilled craftsmen who are working with leather and all the materials to make really, really top-notch cars. So I'm guessing all of your famous people have been here at one point to make their car totally individual. We're going to head through Leighton Brook Park now and make for the town centre. It's really quite amazing just how much green space there is in town.
Ahead is the Lyceum Theatre. Originally dating to 1881, it was built on a disused Catholic chapel, and I believe the well from that chapel is still in place under the stage of the current building. Lots of famous people trod the stage back then, including Stan Laurel and Charlie Chaplin. Unfortunately, that theatre burnt down in 1910 and was replaced by the current building. I've been to see lots of things here. I remember going to see Ken Dodd, for instance, and lots of pantos. We've reached Earl Street, and ahead is the municipal buildings. Looks like someone's having a wedding today at the town hall. To the left of that is Crew Market, which was recently completely revamped. It's a great place to grab a bite to eat, and they have some live music on now and then. If you really want to learn about the history of Crewe, you should visit the Heritage Centre, which is behind Tesco's. I'll point it out to you now so you know where to go. And here's the Heritage Centre, currently open on weekends. As I peer through the bars, I can see the eagles for which Crewe is so well known. There are four in total. There is two here, this one, and one away over yonder. I spotted another one by the entrance to the electric depot on the way back to the park. And there's another, we'll pass later, over at Eagle Bridge. They came from Chester, from the D Bridge, which collapsed and uh, was brought here as scrap but they were too good for melting down and so they used them to decorate the crew works. I guess the C stands for crew. That's far enough for me to walk. <sighs> anyway, it's lovely. Queen's Park is beautiful. Here by the lake, you can grab an ice cream in the summer, hire a boat. It's just a lovely spot. And they do have a park run around the park as well. I remember years ago, they used to have like a little zoo thing as well. I, I'm guessing that's long since gone. Back in town, Jason's heading over now towards Dunwoody Way, over to the Eagle Bridge and uh, the site of the crew works. Snazzy looking gym, I must pay a visit. This used to just be a car park. And here's Christchurch. The Gothic Revival church tower remains, but the roof of the main church was removed due to dry rot. There's now a memorial garden here. Let me just point out these houses here at Betley Street, which date from about 1848 and were for the employees of the Crew Works, built to Joseph Locke's original layout for the Grand Junction Railway Company. I believe it was the responsibility of the people that lived here to keep them looking spick and span. And uh, yeah, they still do.
and here's that eagle at Eagle Bridge Medical Centre. We're just a few yards here from where the Eagle Bridge used to stand across the Chester line. On one side there was the locomotive works at Crew Works and on the other the coach works. I think there was a steel works there as well. Unfortunately, most of it's now gone. And here's what remains of Crew Works, the British Rail Engineering Facility. Crew was just a tiny hamlet until in the 1830s the Grand Junction Railway chose it as the site for their new works for building locomotive engines. Much of the buildings have gone now unfortunately, which is a pity I'm told they were really quite magnificent with glass roofs and wooden floors. A piece of history gone forever. Back at the park, I'm heading back to the car park to sit in my camping chair. I made a new friend. And Jason's heading back via the valley.
And here we are back at Weatherspoons. Time to recharge the Jasonator with Shipyards Pale Ale. <laughs> 